As frequenters of this channel would know, I handle criticism abnormally well and am the least butthurt man on earth. But did you know, about six months ago, the greatest sin known to mankind occurred. The press came out with a series of snarky articles about me that no one read. Now, obviously, that wasn't the right time to go through all of that. However, sins will not go unpunished. So if you like this, and I know you do, we'll go through the entire catalogue of people that can't possibly be happy with their lives, misdiagnosing that as the world's fault. But for now, we're starting with a friendly Geordie's classic, shitting on pedestrian. Cause why pick that fruit at the top of the tree when low hanging fruit's just as juicy, eh? They had one of their rare philosophical outbursts a few months back and decided to write a think piece for their standards. Basically, that means it wasn't littered with real housewives gifts designed to give you epilepsy. So in one of your convulsions, you accidentally <laughs> press the buy now button on some mid-brand sunglasses. Yath. It was ostensibly about Christo being arrested by the terror police, bowling his arthritic mother over in the process, and his girlfriend nearly killing his dog, all caught on camera, where it was described by pedestrians in-house thinking man Cam Tyson as, quote, an overreach. That is exactly how I would describe a home invasion by a secret police force that shocked the f***ing planet. Hmm, probably just try and kill the dog next time, not the mum, hey. Pedestrian, every bit as empathetic as we advertise ourselves to be. Deeper too, as unlike the rest of the cowardly press that would not dare to look at the bigger picture, only Pedestrian picked up the piece of the puzzle we all missed in the story about our civil liberties crumbling in front of our eyes. It was, Friendly Geordie has been mean to us in the past. <laughs> Whoa, why is this publication called The Big Issue, huh? That should be you guys. How could we all forget? in this rearing of an Australian KGB sicked on an innocent family that you, can are the biggest victim in Australian history. I actually do highly recommend reading this. It's a fascinating insight into the mind of a journalist, or lack thereof. He blows past the details of the arrest like it's as boring as reading the phone book, clearly copy-pasted like it was his uni assignment he forgot to hand in, as besides... His three unit English skills are much better employed drawing attention to... There are two wolves caged within the work that Jordan Shanks produces. One containing a laundry list of culturally shaky... Ooh, we're off to a good start here. Culture. As, as prescribed by, by pedestrian. Questionably hyper-masculine. Well, that should give you a clue as to what level of pussy we're dealing with here. Me. How much of a little bitch would you have to be to describe me as hyper-masculine? I do Korean rice mask tutorials. I wear Korean rice masks. Probably more than I eat because I'm watching my figure at the moment. I was visibly scared of Spaniard. Can you imagine how much of a sheltered pansy you would have to be to look at my complete lack of testosterone and think, Oh my god, the same skin regime as BTS. Not only is that hyper-masculine, it's cultural appropriation. Very legitimate missteps that demand scrutiny. Oh really? My missteps demand scrutiny, do they? Well, what are these very legitimate missteps? So sharp scrutinizer that spends his life penning such intellectual groundbreakers as can Netflix come out with more seasons of The Circle already? His views on colonialism, the oppression of the Uyghur people, and sexual assault are not good to put it lightly. Oh my god, they're that reprehensible, he can't even go into them. Or, he can't go into them because he doesn't know shit about them and just heard everyone around his office running around like the lemmings they are saying, Yikes, yikes, this is not it, yikes, this is not a vibe. Did you even like see what's trending on TikTok? And assume they were bad without developing a rationale as to why, just this, to use your terminology, down the line laundry list of all the manufactured outrages your parent company invented, ironically as part of a smear campaign that the head of Fairfax devised because I dare went after their bras in arms. If those missteps are so egregious that they quote, demand scrutiny Cam, how come you or in fact anyone in your blight of an organisation can't actually offer any scrutiny of them? How come even though I've rebuffed them all numerous times you can't offer a counter argument to those replies, you just mindlessly go back to parroting the list. Is it because you don't actually care about any of these issues as it's not being smug over the Heartbreak High remake and therefore your actual knowledge of these issues is quote, not good to put it lightly? Face it, it's clear you're out of your depth from your first strike. 
You're like a chimp that doesn't know they're playing checkers. They're just dressed up as a man for a photo. Not only did you copy paste the most important part of the story, you copy pasted your self-described attempt at critical thinking. Stop thinking you're better than you are. This is the food chain. This is you lot. Accept it. Stop trying to rise above your rank. Plankton are a threat to you. Friendly Geordie's axe grinding against individual journalists. Yeah, but Cam, everyone else sees that as a virtue because again, uh, they see it as a virtue because it's evident in this sentence that you have this self-inflated view that did you know that I as a journalist think journalists are the most noble people on earth? How unself-serving is that? Yeah, you keep thinking that, mate. That is an excellent image to portray to the public. We are self-canonized saints. And the weaponization of his rabid fan base against them. Yes! Main tweets, Trump, main beef. Get ready for this. This closer is particularly narcissistic. Apparently that puts me dangerously beyond reproach. He thinks he gets to objectively decide, without a hint of irony, mind you, what is and isn't the societal line from his chat, plastic flamingo infested office in Melbourne. And what a surprise, it's drawn at him and everyone he knows being criticized. Here's my comeback to that, you ready? Aren't you nearly 40? You're like Keemstar, but not famous. I'll give you this, it is an accomplishment to be around eight times the age of a five-year-old and still have their view of the world. To give you an idea of just how pathetic your line of thinking is at your age, I'm gonna sum up your views in a way that you can comprehend. Totally unbutthurt man baby, wears about no longer having a monopoly on Twitter pylons, tries to pass that tantrum off as being somehow virtuous, while also thinking he personally has the societal authority to determine if that's societally acceptable or not, and it's every bit as cringe as you think your job's easy, Cam. Writing like you takes literally no effort. Paying attention to the callous line-stepping he does with waltz-like frequency is cause for immediate and disproportionate rebuke. Fuck yeah it is. Any little pop-up from you whack-a-moles. BAM! It's astonishing to me how unself-aware these blood clots are. Journalists make a career out of bullying. That's their entire job. Nelson Muntz with a typewriter. They are paid to ridicule, mock and shame anyone their little click turns on. And if you don't believe me, go back and look at pedestrian's body of work. It's an endless line of, oh my God, this is not it. Wrecked. Dumpster fire. Every moment in history is a dumpster fire. That is, unless they're a sponsor. Then they get the highly coveted yes, handed out only to RuPaul's Drag Race, which for all I know is another f***ing sponsor. So it's essentially a really shit, ineffective protection racket that you don't actually have to pay into, run by grown men calling other men man babies, while their entire business model is, give me money. No. F*** you, you've triggered my mental health issues! So unchallenged, so complacent, with all the venom they spit out online routinely, that when anyone turns the table on them, they cry like one of those old Iraqi grandmas whose house was just droned. Can you imagine being so devoid of basic comprehension skills that you seriously are unable to understand? Why is this hyper-masculine racist defending himself against my parent company's smear campaign? Why isn't he just letting us assassinate his character like everyone else? Why am I receiving blowback? I'm a journalist. I've got a little degree that says I can be a f***head. His argument really just boils down to, Oh, I like it better when people on TV make fun of people who work me. <laughs> <laughs> your worldview is a joke, and yet you wonder why you're the butt of a joke. Let that sink in, Cam, and oh wait, you can't, as you've just proven you have zero self-awareness with that sentence. Oh well, let's continue paying you out. First from Shanks himself and his caustic brand of petty insult. He's coming from the man who claims that Matt Canavan is a cold kissing goon that should quote, shut the f*** up, calls Heston from MasterChef a bald freak. Here you say every photo of Barnaby Joyce looks like he just shat himself. But that's all fine. That's not petty because it's not about him. When it is about him, what puts me, quote, dangerously beyond reproach again, according to the guy that calls Scott Morrison Captain Dumbass, is when I dared call Cam Tyson a man that works at pedestrian, get ready for this unfounded characterization, a hipster. The man who wrote, tell us your thoughts on love and dating and COVID for the chance to win a $500 Uber Eats voucher. Your job is native advertising and you get an erection over Uber Eats. Sorry, Cam, my mistake. You're definitely not a- Malcolm Roberts willingly posted a photo of himself getting 
fucking owned by a green senator. Hips. Chloe Zhao became the first woman of color to win Best Director in the Oscars 93 year history. I'm sorry, I can't do it. You even yell the classic hipster trope of, I'm not a fucking hipster, God. Cam, please. Take the advice you gave Matt Canavan and shut the f up. Shut up before you say something really stupid, even for pedestrian standards. And oh, sorry, I just had a quick look down at the article again. Get this sentence. Shanks attacks us, and that's not fair because his attacks are anti corporate simplism. You dismiss my criticisms of your horrendous glorified banner ad as anti corporate simplism. I would love for you to explain what you mean by anti-corporate simplism, Cam. Do extrapolate on how my arguments for why you even having a job should be considered a trialable offence at The Hague that I've been saying for years, which your publication has never substantively addressed, in fact, even addressed, until right now, where you say, oh, it's not that simple. Hmm, responding with you don't understand while having a sook. Someone's going to have successful relationships in life. I'll give you this though, champ. It is simple. See if you can follow along at home. His publication is primarily sponsored by the most damaging bank in this nation's history. Everything from making the Great Depression great to orchestrating this nation's first coup to killing orangutans and Cambodians to this day, Combank can. These daiquiri fueled fuckwits, whose existence relies on land grabs, plundering virgin rainforest and killing some of the poorest farmers on earth, accuse me of having a bad take on colonialism, while them literally cheering that on for a job is fine, but me criticising that is corporate simplism. How's this for simple? You're a cunt. You and everyone who works at Nine Fairfax is a cunt. Simple enough? Everyone in your organization are the most obnoxious, vile, sanctimonious pricks there are, fabricating and whining about pathetic injustices endlessly and can only do so because you're funded by some of the worst injustices on earth. And at that point, that, when you point that out, all of a sudden, it gets more complicated. When you actually have to do something, when your organization profits off of endless legitimate injustices, no. Nah, you get to be as cruel and as c**ty as you wish. Everyone else has to be the definition of an angel in your eyes, which is to take your endless stream of abuse and defamation in good nature. And if anything in that infantile equation changes, you get laughable adaptations like media types discuss Geordie's position at work in self-censored proper nouns. By discuss he means bitch, and by self-censor he means masterfully hide this channel's name as <laughs> No, how did they crack up Germany? at World War II level code. Oh well, let's just keep using it. Maybe that's a one-off and oh no, they covered it again. Damn you. Blah, 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 blah. Meanwhile, we've been dragged through court and threatened with both jail and bankruptcy, but that's all a sideshow to the real censorship in this country. His gremlin-y friends not being able to put mm. openly next to one specific Twitter trend. Well, to celebrate that this Cambodian land grab funded commentary are so easily terrified, we're selling <laughs> shirts as a badge of honor. Get yours at fiddlydoodies.com. <laughs> to his credit though, the other arm of his work, you know, the part that doesn't criticize him and his infallible friends that get fat off the murder of orangutans. That's just petty bullying. And now we all know we're going to be better, aren't we? Emboldens what might otherwise be a politically disengaged demographic. Pedestrian readers, on the other hand, woke. Ha! Huh, Malcolm Roberts just owned himself. Biggest news of the day. Hmm. November 12, 2020. Why does that date ring a bell? And oh, that's right. It was the day Parliament introduced its piss week reforms on their biggest sponsor. But look at the funny face. Were it not for the body of work Shanks has produced, scores of young voters across Australia may not be so finely attuned to the harmful reach of Murdoch. Just Murdoch. My countless videos pointing out Cam's parent company, which in my view is not only far worse, but objectively way, way more annoying. No mention from pedestrian required, as that's the mean half of my work, you see. His piece of shit parent company holding fundraisers for the Liberal Party at its headquarters, something so brazen not even the Murdoch press would dare fucking do, but his employers are just dandy for democracy. For all those juicy deets, check out Friendly Geordie's is Butt Hurt the Movie, because that really was blowing the lid off a house. Well, this is more blowing the lid off the dollhouse within that house. 
the mismanagement of the New South Wales water portfolio and the frankly bizarre koala wars waged by the Berejiklian government. Yeah, and that's all you need to know about the koala wars is that they were weird, am I right? Of which you did no fucking reporting on, none. Well, actually that's not entirely true, Cam. You personally, you ready? Here's a classic Twitter gif just to keep your attention. Did your part to spread the blatant misinformation campaign again directed by your fucking parent company about Gladys Berejiklian winning the Koala Wars. Complete lie. Elvis here got exactly what he wanted and probably said, Thank you very much. Haha. <laughs> F I'm good at impressions. But speaking of spreading blatant misinformation campaigns directed by your council of nine, you were perfectly happy to link to the trumped up hit pieces written about me to prove that I'm problematic. But when giving me the thankers of praise for the things you don't cover at all, no need to start covering them properly now. No links. Nothing. Didn't bother to correct the record, didn't accept fault, instead pretended like you were cheering on the sidelines when in reality the only thing you were doing was deliberately, actively making the job harder than it already was. Christ, everyone who works at pedestrian are awful, legitimately awful people. I'd let a pedophile out of jail if it saw one of them take his place. <laughs> I like it. Shanks provides gateway digestible content that taps into the latent rage of the young and disenfranchised, while pedestrian provides a gateway to the youth buying shit credit, shit governments and shit dog teens. It's worth just closing that as a publication. Our history with Shanks is complex. Here we go. Several years ago, circa 2016, we covered him and his videos fairly favorably, fairly frequently. For various boring editorial reasons, that ceased. Ah, trying to glean past the deets again, are you, Cam? I don't think they were boring. I think they're much more interesting than the entire article you devoted to the news that Chris Hemsworth went to KFC. The various boring editorial reasons is that this puppet and his booth were bought out by the propaganda megaphone for the liberals that like plays and gays, otherwise known as Nine Fairfax, and as such they had a woke czar installed who said, How are we supposed to pretend vodka's a brave if you're covering a guy that does more accents than f***ing Billie Eilish, who we also liked a millisecond ago? The various boring editorial reasons are, you change hands, and as soon as you did, so too did your mind, because you're prostitutes. Couldn't care less, really, as I think that I can live without your fairly frequent, fairly favourable coverage. Thank you very much. Then when I started doing maths reviews, which coincidentally is owned by Nine, hey, all of a sudden I'm hip again. Correlation, not causation, I suppose. And so, pedestrians started to ask if they could use my name to hawk their shoddy products again, where I promptly told pedestrian to go back to Surrey Hills, walk around barefooted until you hit a mystery needle, or how he sees it. In ensuing years, my own personal view of Shanks and his work morphed. Right. Or is this unbelievably handsome gentleman put it over two years ago. You look like one of those Norse workers in Age of Mythology and you behave like one, going wherever the digital hand commands you. Friendly Geordies is lit. Ski pad. Friendly Geordies is cooked. Uh, Udish dis bad. I wonder why Cam didn't include that in the list of slights against him. Cause that's obviously true, I'm just not a fucking hipster, God. He doesn't like us, he doesn't like me. Fair enough. Mm, I don't think you could spend this much of the article writing about me not liking you and then act like you're not phased. Cam from six months ago. I'm not phased either. <laughs> Thanks routine potting of individual digital journalists. Ah, oh, for f Hmm, maybe if I repeat it 30 times, people will have sympathy for me. The bulk of whom operate largely on the same side of the spectrum as he portrays himself to be. <sighs> spectrum. Every time I think it's gotten as egregious as it could possibly get. Not nope, even more f***ed than you imagined. On what planet are you or any of the nerdy rodents that you tussle around with in the gutter of Australian discourse on the same side as me? Uranus? That's obviously where you pulled this out of. For example, what's pedestrian's view on Anthony Albanese? Oh my god, he loves Australia Day and he loves coal. We only used to love Australia Day and still love coal. I think anyone could accuse me of being even slightly sympathetic to Gladys Berejiklian. You guys? Queen, Queen, oh my god, she won the Koala War and her TV's tiny cute. I hate Julie Bishop. Queen, Queen, asbestos Queen. Chris Pine. Queen, Queen, defense contractor Queen. I mean King, King. I'm not portraying myself to be on the side of Labour, the Shooters, Fishers and some other rural independents. I am on their side. Clearly from your coverage, you're not. You are very clearly not. 
And yet I honestly think you've convinced yourself you are because one look at you, Cam, and it's painfully obvious that you're yet another casualty of the failed anti-establishment punk gone corporate trope. I'll just transfer the ethos of Black Flag into my hard-hitting, no-holds-barred journalism style, right? Right? Wrong. You're not Henry Rollins writing for the Rolling Stone, mate. You basically write scripts for iShop TV. What's happening right now is blatant overreach by the state, but for all his boy who cried wolf tinge schick, the seriousness of that may not land as hard as it needs to outside a self-constructed bubble. Yes, yes. Excellent analysis from a boy in the eye of the self-constructed blue check bubble who doesn't even understand the story of the boy who cried wolf is FYI, the boy who cried wolf wasn't about hurting your feelings, Cam. It was about lying. The boy in that story wasn't coming down from the mountains to say Cam Tyson is a hipster. The boy was coming down to yell non-existent threats like, Oh my God, Abba hates Aboriginals. Bill Shorten loves white people. In other words, you're the boy, Cam. The sad little boy. And by the use of your th 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 this code, I'm clearly the wolf. And as you can see by the likes the pedestrian gets, the village people just don't buy your tall tales anymore. To summarise what I've already stated, but it really needs to be drilled in again, as this is the single greatest insight I've ever seen into how the press in this country think. His overarching point seems to be that if only I allowed he and his fellow bespectacled shitheads to spread intentionally damaging rumours about me, if only I allowed him and the rest of his dregs of the private school system to endlessly regurgitate these coordinated character assassinations as an attempt to deflect from the fact that in seven years, none of them ever has ever been able to substantively counter-argue anything I've ever pointed out about how they operate. If only I just passively sat by and allowed these professional liars to dictate the result of every state and federal election on no other criteria than what's in the business interest of their f***ing parent company. If only I allowed them to degrade this country's democracy into a perverted corporatized democracy where it's more or less just three major shareholders voting for the board. If only I just lay there and got endlessly kicked by these bruises. If I just let them get away with not only lazy reporting, deliberately misleading reporting, maybe. Just maybe, when Christo's family is illegally assaulted, maybe at that point, the sad little fantasy these breathing tumours have had implanted in their heads at uni will step in and make them think, oh no, no, you can try and bankrupt friendly Geordies for pointing out the record of crooks that we try and hide behind puff pieces about how much they like footy, that's all fine, but arresting someone for asking a question, I can sort of imagine myself in that position. I like to cosplay as a reporter. Maybe. But if I were you, I'd save the whole first they came for friendly Geordie spiel. Not worth the effort. They'll never come for you. You work in the gas chambers. You will never be in Christo's position. You will never get arrested for what Christo did because you don't do what he does. You do the exact opposite of what he does. He uncovers the self-interested actions of those that hold public office and stoically suffers the consequences without the faintest of desire for pity or glory. You bury that corruption and endlessly whine like a piglet when someone calls you out for it. Well may you call our audience of teachers, tradies, professors, retirees, the unemployed, hospo workers, self-made millionaires, people on disability pensions. You can call that wide array from all walks of life a bubble if you like. But look at how many likes you get, Cam. Who's in your bubble other than other losers in your very specific profession? I'll let you sum it up. There are no winners in all of this. No foreseeable outcome that can possibly be construed as a net positive for either the political or media spheres. And that absolutely soaps. There's the line! Yay! Exactly what media outlets like Pedestrian and Junkie are designed to do. Oh, everything sucks except this discount on Dyson vacuum cleaners. That gives me life. All parties suck. All politicians are the same, except the ones anointed by our board. They're kind of okay in a daggy boomer vibe sort of way. But don't worry, there absolutely is a silver lining to this and it's a good one. Next to no one actually reads Pedestrian. I mean, I more or less do to remind you why. I read Pedestrian so you don't have to. And I think that's worth a like. And to sign up to our Patreon so we can continue to read Pedestrian. No, no, challenge their parent company. Also get that shirt just to piss him off a little more. Like and subscribe. Please share and comment below. Command.